It's 12 p.m. Hello and welcome to Newsbeat. My name is Kenneth Jesse. Let's take a look at our top stories this afternoon. Grieved prospective pilgrims protest and call for the removal of Hajj board chair Sheikh Aisikwe of allegations of embezzlement and incompetency as this year's pilgrimage to Mecca begins today. So coming up, Minister of Roads and Highways inspects progress of repair works on roads and bridges destroyed by floods in the central region. The Jukwachufu Prasu Road works expected to complete today and open for public use. Coming up in this bulletin, an identified young lady believed to be a teenager found dead in a pool of blood at Nkremofokrum in the Abra Aseibu Kwamankese district of the central region. Details of these and many other stories plus business, sports and entertainment coming up shortly. Stay with us. Welcome to the program. Now 2022 pilgrimage to Mecca for Hajj by Ghanaians begins today, hours before the first batch departs from the country though, a Muslim group called Patriotic Muslim Front is protesting against the board chairman of the Hajj board, Sheikh I.C. Kway. They accuse him of embezzlement and incompetency, and thus is calling on the president of the Republic, Nanea Kufuado, to as a matter of urgency, sack the board chair. Some prospective Hajj pilgrims earlier alleged they had been handed a raw deal by the National Hajj board in the amount expected to be paid by pilgrims for this year's Hajj. According to the aggrieved prospective pilgrims, the Hajj board led by Sheikh I.C. Kway has breached an agreement it concerted to in 2020 and 2022 when the annual pilgrimage was suspended due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. My colleague Kofi Otuo Beko has been following the protest and joins me more for an update. Kofi? Good afternoon. Welcome to the program. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes. What more can you report? All right. Um, there is a group called a Muslim Pro Patriotic, Patriotic Muslim Front, um, and they are staging protests against the board chair of the Hajj board. And they are saying that the, 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 the president should sack um, Sheikh ICP, who is the board chairman of the Hajj board, um, because of incompetency and mismanagement. According to them, they paid an amount of um, 19500 in 2020 for them to be taken to the um, Hajj. But then, uh, due to COVID-19, they weren't able to go, and they were promised that they will use the same amount of money to take them to Hajj next year when the time comes for them to be taken to the trip. But then, here again, the time is due for them to go. They are also charging again the, 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 the board chair, uh, which is Sheikh ICQ is charging another amount of 7,000 and they think it is not uh, appropriate. So they are staging a protest against him and also calling on the president to remove him from the board because what he's doing is contrary to the laws and, and the programs of the Muslim values. I have with me here Haruna uh, Mohammed, who is one of the convener of the group, um, the president. I would want to talk to him to give us a brief um, on why they are staging this demonstration and why they are calling for the board chair to be sacked. Um, hello, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us on Metro News. Good afternoon, my brother, for having us this afternoon. You are calling for the board chair to be sacked. Why are you calling for Mr. Sheikh I to be sacked from the Hajj board? Thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, as a Muslim, one of the defining features of a practicing Muslim is the advancement of the course of Islam and again, uprightness and righteousness. So for which reason, ICQ fell short. He lacks the credibility to lead Muslim Ummah. He lacks the credibility to lead the board as chair. Now, if you recall, in 2019, because of the pandemic in 2020, Hajj pilgrimage did not take place. And um, as a matter of fact, um, if you look at the paragraph three, that was signed by Sheikh Isikwe, indicating that in the event where they resume, 
Hajj operations, those who decide to leave their monies in the account of the Hajj would not be affected. Um, fast forward today in 2022, in, um, on the 6th of June, they held a press conference. To our surprise, he indicated that those who left their money should top up 7,000 Ghana cities before they could embark. Otherwise, failing to do so, you will forfeit your Hajj this year, which we found unacceptable. That was insensitive to the plight of, of, of the ordinary Ghanaian, the ordinary Muslim, especially the Muslim community. We are representing the aspirations and sentiments. We've had a series of engagement after, you know, engaged in the, um, with those um, prospective pilgrims in 2020, uh, 2020 who could not embark. And they have charged us that we should fight for them. They have nobody who will fight. And as a patriotic Muslim front, that is what we've been doing. And so if you look at the credibility aspect, um, that was in last month, they went to Hajj conference. And then Sheikh Asikwe, knowing that the money is sitting in the account, tried to form a cabal behind him to be able to sway the, uh, the board by introducing somebody who was not appointed by the president, introducing him to the bank in Riyadh, saying this is a director of finance whom he was not the person president appointed. And so this lacks, he lacks credibility, and we are calling on the president to dismiss him as the board chair so that we can restore confidence in the board. Otherwise, in the coming years, if they ask us to pay money or if there's something of that sort, do you think we'll do? We'll not abide. So we are calling on the president to look up, you know, to this concerns and then dismiss him, period. Are you calling for the whole board to dismiss or only for Mr. Sheikh I.C. Kwe? I indicated earlier on, in the person of Sheikh I.C. Kwe, for the reason being that he lost that credibility. I can't say that of any other board member. And I can't say that of any other board member who went to change the signatories of the accounts. Only I.C. Kwe who did that. And so as a Muslim, he's dragging the name of Muslim to disrepute. And so for us as patriotic Muslim, representing the aspirations, the sentiment, especially those whom he signed agreement on the 20th of June, indicating that they would not be affected should there be increment. And today, fast forward, look at what is happening. So we are taking we are taking to our heels simply because of this lack of credibility. Uh, the, the the regional minister of Greater Accra, Honorable Harry Kote, have come for the petition, and he has assured you to work on it or take measures on it. If he fails to take the measures, what will be the next line of action of your group? I think you heard me when I was addressing the the, the media. I said so that if in case the His Excellency fail to heed to our plea, we are going to demonstrate continuously. I mean, across the, the 12 regions, the 16 regions as we speak. So, are so you for waiting? us, are you the right resort, the last resort will be in court. That is our last resort, should the president fail to heed our plea. Yes. Okay, so now you are waiting for authorities to take measures before yes, and the, follow, the subsequent uh, demonstrations. Yes, sure, sure. So um, we are giving the president uh, one month, by, one which month. Th by which time this year's heart would have collapsed. I mean, would have come to an end so that at least, um, I mean, um, with the ample time one month, the president will think through and look at the consequences therein and then apply, you know, the common sense so that we can all put that to rest. All right, thank you, sir. So, Ken, that was the president for Patriotic Muslim Front. They are staging demonstration against the Hajj board chair, Mr. Sheikh I.C. Kwe. They are calling for the president to remove him over incompetency and mismanagement and also some things that they think it goes contrary uh, to the laws. And they restarted the demonstration from Mamo B. Konka. We, 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 we took to the principal street of Accra right to Abrasport where um, they address the media and also the regional minister, the Greater Accra Regional Minister, uh, Mr. Harry Kote, came to um, take the petition. Right. Kofi Otuo McQueen is our man on the ground following the protesters who are not happy with the Hajj board. Now, on allegations about fees, the board chair, Sheikh Isi Kwe, had mentioned that the current fee for the pilgrimage is lower than others in the sub-region, adding that the board, with the support of government, has put in place measures to make the financial expenditure more accommodating for pilgrims. We are doing our best to engage the board for further conversation on the allegations. We shall keep you posted in due time. And at the Hajj village here in Accra, our colleague Rosemary Anigba joins me now for a situational report. Hello, Rosemary. What more can you tell us? 
pilgrimage to Mecca in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is one of the largest gatherings of its kind in the world. After two years of suspension due to COVID-19, the Saudi Arabia Authority have reopened the Kingdom doors to foreign Muslims. I'm currently at the Hajj village in Accra and the place looks a bit dry with a handful of persons. Information I've gathered here indicates that all focus is at Tamale since the first badge list from there. Some people here have refused to speak on camera since the authorities are not yet around. Metro TV will follow up and keep you updated. Rosemary Anyingba, Accra. Thank you, Rosemary. She's a woman on the ground at the Hajj village. Meanwhile, about 433 pilgrims are set to take off to Mecca today from the Tamale International Airport. In all, 3,067 Ghanaian pilgrims are expected to take part in this year's Hajj in Mecca. My colleague Al Hassan Dibaba is on standby to give us more. Hello. Hello, Baba. Can you hear me? Good afternoon. Welcome to the show. So, have the first batch already left for Mecca? Thank you so much, Kenneth. The first batch of uh, three, 433 pilgrims who are expected to take off this to Mecca are set to take off. Even though the flight is still at the Tamale International Airport, all of them are set inside the flight to take off. Meanwhile, some some of the pilgrims are not who, do, those they said they are not supposed to take off from Tamale are part of them because when you look at some of the pregnant one woman was even in a wheelchair and the lady was pushed into an ambulance to be part of the pregnant which the high board CEO or the chair of the high board said they were not going to allow meanwhile the person was also part of it apart from that one almost everything at the Tamale International Airport was very set and things were moving on very smoothly. As we speak, all the cars are now empty because the, the 433 people are all set in the plane to take off. Meanwhile, Ghana was supposed to, uh, about 690 something, 6,900 and something pilgrimage supposed to take part in this year's Hajj. But in the end, Ghana was given only 3,069 pilgrimage. So currently everything is set at the Tamale International Airport and uh, the police, military and all the uh, stakeholders in this year's Haji Haj are doing their work perfectly well at the Tamale International Airport. Well, tons of Muslims are protesting against the leadership of the Haj board. Is there a similar situation in Tamale? Well, when the CEO arrived at the Tamale International Airport, people were praising him for trying to organize this year Hajj very well. Meanwhile, we had, we had information that somewhere in Accra, many Muslims are protesting against his leadership, but there's nothing of such nature in Tamale here, as people were very happy seeing him, and he spoke to them. He even urged them to cooperate with the authority in Saudi Arabia to ensure that nothing untoward happened, most especially to pregnant from Ghana. Right, Al Hassan Dibaba, thank you very much for speaking to us this afternoon. To a rather devastating story, as a young lady believed to be a teenager has been found lifeless in a pool of blood. A suspected murder case. The body of this girl was found in Nkremufu Krum, a community in the Abra Asebu Kwamai Kesa district of the central region. According to eyewitnesses, the lady might have been killed somewhere and the body dumped close to a goil filling station in the community. The sad incident happened yesterday at 3 p.m. local time and according to the police, the body has been conveyed to the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital for investigation. No arrest has been made. Metro News will follow up and keep viewers updated. Now the Jukwa Chifo Prasu Road has been opened to traffic owing ad hoc measures put in place to restore the portion of the road that was divided. 
in nearby Comenda, Edna, Eguafu, Ebre municipality. More than 100 houses are estimated to have been flattened following the overflow of some rivers in the central region. Some major bridges leaking several towns and communities have also collapsed and currently receiving attention. The National Disaster Management Organization, led by its Director General, Eric Nana Ajima Prempe and the Central Regional Minister Marigold Asan visited the affected areas and provided relief items. Today, the Roads and Highways Minister Kwesi Amwakwata is expected to inspect progress of ongoing works and to check on the displaced and other affected persons. Now, Akwesi Ado is our man on the ground and he joins me for a conversation on this. Akwesi, good afternoon. Always good to have you on the show. Has the minister arrived? Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Ken. So um, the minister arrived a while ago, and um, as I speak now, um, we have uh, we are done with the interaction with the minister. Now, Mr. Kusia Mwakwata has announced that um, the ministry is looking for um, permanent solution to the issue, and so accompanying him. Uh, was a brand engineer who came to assess um, the level of devastation and to also um, profess measures that would ensure that um, we do not witness such situation in the future. Um, as we do know, um, the bridge itself wasn't affected. It was just um, a part of the road closer to the bridge uh, which was being affected. And so um, yesterday, the contractor who came on site has been able uh, to fill up that road that was being created, uh, which has allowed the traffic to uh, be able to flow along that stretch today. And is that likely to happen? Are we likely to see the public use that stretch? The public has already begun using that particular stretch, um, except that um, if we do not find a lasting solution to the problem, we may encounter such same situation in the future when um, there is... How are the victims faring? How are they doing? Yes, um, as we do know, um, some of the victims who have relatives nearby are still lodging with their relatives. Those who do not uh, have also been offered uh, some places such as uh, school classrooms, um, churches, and then uh, mosques for, uh, for, uh, for them to um, stay for a while. As um, the minister did announce yesterday that they may be looking for uh, a lasting solution for them also and to assist them. Um, as of now, they may have to wait for um, range to to pray from um, their house so that they may either go back as um, the regional coordinating council also look for um, adequate and lasting solution to the problem at hand. Okay, Akwesiado, thank you very much for speaking to us. He's our resident correspondent in the central region. Meanwhile, communications team member of the National Democratic Congress, Beatrice Annan, has called out the government on its failure to stop perennial flooding after allocating huge sums of money to its outfit to fight the menace. If you have a leadership that fails to acknowledge the situation and the flooding situation, and is rather interested in the mere rhetoric, is rather interested, we will all every day come and sit here. You see, admittedly, the flood situation has been something that has been perennial almost every year. Mm -hmm. And every government, one way or the other, contributes to making it better. But when John Mahama was in power and the Jew Ted incident happened, members of the NPP made it look like John Mahama was a meteorologist who was responsible for the rainfall and subsequently responsible for the death that occurred at June on the, I don't know whether it's June 3rd or June 4th. And so when you do politics with flooding, and you tell us that within a space of 180 days, when you come, Accra will be a different city. And six years into your administration, flooding situation is getting worse. Then, I mean, it's, it's just, sh I mean, it just shows the rhetoric we, we have been faced with. And I keep saying that this, is, this government is a government of PR. However, telecommunications team member of the New Patriotic Party, Ellen Amadeco, says no government is responsible for floods in the country. She stated that citizens who build in the waterways are to blame. If you have a leadership that fails to acknowledge the situation and the flooding situation, and is... 
Are we going to blame... Where were the local authorities? That is what I'm coming to. Are we going to blame President Mahama, President Akufuado, President Nkrumah for this? Yes. When Ghanaians, correct thinking Ghanaian, you went to fill a river and went to build. Hmm. Then we go to who gave him permission to build there? You go there, you realize that some chief who thinks that he owns his, 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 his predecessors have given the land to Ghana water. Properly so paid for. No, no, and now he feels let's that let's it is his turn. Let me just finish it. It's his turn to also chop from the land. When to give it to this person. And this right thinking Ghanaian also feel that I can fill water and build. And then you fill and you build. And then the rains come. There's nothing you can do about the rains. It, it overtakes you. And then you come and blame me on my deck here. That it is my fault. Let's bring you more stories as the Greater Accra Regional Coordinating Council and the Regional Security Council has given a 48-hour ultimatum to all owners of houses situated at the CSIR and Animal Research Institute lands at Frafraha in the Adentan municipality. Speaking at a media engagement in Accra, the regional minister Henry Quarter said, demolishing exercise on the first 200 acres of encroached lands is scheduled to commence soon and will be unannounced. We wish to place on records that none of the buildings within the inner perimeter of the 200 acres of land have been given or issued permits by the Adentan Municipal Assembly. The intended action of the Regional Security Council, supported by the Adentan Municipal Assembly, shall be carried out without notice. The above indicates that Adenta Municipal Assembly has the power to remove the structures that are mushrooming on the CSR lands without prior warning. However, the Assembly as well as the Animal Research Institute has, have gone ahead to issue warnings to developers within the perimeter to stop any developments which have been largely ignored by encroachers with impunity. Consequently, RECSEC is collaborating with the Adenta Municipal Assembly and the CSIR to remove all unauthorized structures mushrooming within the fence land without further delay. RECSEC is hereby giving a 48 hours notice from now, effective now as we speak, to all those who are putting up such unauthorized structures within the fence wall to pack their tools and materials from the land without fail. Any persons found loitering on within the 200 acre perimeter after the deadline will be dealt with in accordance with the laws of the land. RECSEC with the Adenta Municipal Assembly and the Animal Research Institutes of the Council for Industrial Research proceed to remove every structure on the land subsequently. This is Newsbeat on Metro Television. We'll go for a quick break. We'll be back with more. You're welcome back. The Yulo Krobo Municipal Security Council has given an indication that a military detachment currently accompanying engineers of the ECG in the ongoing prepaid meter installation exercise in the Krobo enclave may be withdrawn. 50 armed military personnel have been deployed to assist workers of the ECG to undertake the exercise in the Krobo enclave. Although the ECG says the armed military personnel are only providing technical support, Residents and some traditional leaders of the area have raised concerns over the soldiers. I've been joined on the phone by the Municipal Chief Executive of the Yulu Krobo Municipal Assembly for a conversation. Good afternoon, Honorable. Welcome to the program. What has made the withdrawal of the military imminent? <laughs> Thank you very much for, for the opportunity. But let me just uh, clear this thing. I, I, it wasn't a categorical statement I made. It was a response to a question he asked that 
uh, what is the my, my view? It was in fact my personal view of the agitations by the chiefs from Udumasi area, the uh, uh, Manya Krobo, uh, Lower Manya Krobo area. And I said that the reason why the military came in was that um, UCG workers uh, reported that uh, they've been attacked by some, some youth groups. And when we listened to some meetings that they held with the, the tape, uh, recordings that we, we, we chanced on, it made us uh, feel that uh, we should not uh, play with, with their security. You, uh, mind you, uh, we have had a problem in the municipality here where uh, the UCG staff, the union, uh, told their management that anything that they, they will hold management responsible for any any harm or in anything that happens to any of their staff, and it led to the closure of the Somania UCG office. So I was telling the interviewer that um, if people feel that the presence of the military doesn't speak well about us because uh, come uh, to look uh, come and uh, come uh, to think of it that um, uh, just installation of prepaid meter it suggests who are uh, guarding them to do it. it it tells you that probably these people are difficult people right. so if the chiefs felt bad about that then the only way that can solve that problem is for them to guarantee the safety of the workers of ECG and so if they come and they say openly and say that, look, we are ready to even ask chiefs. We, we have the youth leaders and other people, uh, chiefs. Uh, we are ready to use them to support ECG to implement this uh, prepaid. And then the, 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 the possibility of them uh, going will be there. Right. Mind you, this prepaid meter, uh, uh, the issues people have with it was that, uh, you know, uh, Ever since I, I became MT, I've sat in about two, uh, three uh, stakeholder engagements uh, that UCG organized. And the problem I, I realized was that those people who uh, attended the meeting as reps of their groups never went back to tell them. So the stakeholder meeting that they had, uh, they, they asked the traditional council to, to come, they bring somebody. They ask the uh, Christian Council to come. They bring somebody. The Muslim community. They bring somebody. The youth groups. They bring people. The media. So we discuss a whole lot of things. So now, if people are saying that they uh, they are not aware that prepaid meter was going to be installed in a proper area, it tells you that those who attended the meeting never never uh, informed their members. And uh, the, the, the prepaid meter too was uh, uh, an answer to a question. Uh, of uh, the people's mistrust for right. UCG workers. That they let, are let, me, let, me, let me come in here. You say that what we just discussed was an answer to a question you gave someone, but you being the head of security in the area, should we not take it as an official statement? No, no, what I'm saying is that, so may, well, I say maybe, but people are not talking of uh, what uh, the, 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 the foundation of the me. Right, the foundation was that, if, if people are uh, not happy with military so, uh, uh, guarding the UCD people from doing that, then people should guarantee that if they go, there should be... So that's why you say me. That, that's okay. why the guy put me. But it's like people are putting it as if uh, it is a uh, 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 final thing. If I don't have the power alone to take that decision. Right. Because as music chairman, I don't have all the security details. That is why we say music. So it is a big decision that I will carry. But this one was my personal view that, oh, if my chiefs are not happy with the presence of the military, then all that we can do is that let us guarantee the safety of ECG people. Then probably they can be withdrawn. Okay. Honorable, how is progress of work so far? Oh, so far, so far, so good. Uh, but I believe that there's a need to engage. If people are genuinely saying they, 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 are, they, they are not aware uh, they have issues. Uh, some issues are genuine because, you know, they are replacing meters. Uh, so when they come to the house, a compound house of about 20 people, and they have only two meters there, that is what they are replacing. Okay. Then if anyone wants to request for a new meter, that person will have to pay for it, that one, it's 700 cities. 
So people are saying, yes, we want the prepaid meter, but it is expensive. The, no, please, the extra uh, one. Come clear on this. Are you saying that they are only replacing meters at houses where there's a large household with few meters? Oh, no, 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 no. What I'm saying is that uh, 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 you asked me the progress of when I say it is it is going on well. Okay. Meanwhile, I think that if people have challenge, uh, they some, they have some challenges with some of the of, of the work that is going on. It, it, it's important we also look at, at those ones. And one, um, I'll just give an example. So it's not like only places that they have, but it's, it's across every every house. Okay. But Briefly, before people, before before I let you go, you said that even if you withdraw the military personnel, you will have to get some guarantees or assurances from no, no, what i'm saying is that what i'm saying what i said was that okay if and uh, the chiefs want the military out then they have to guarantee or undertake that if the military is not there we will ensure that the ecg workers work without any fear or any threat from anybody okay. then that one the security people can look at it and say okay why don't you get child Right. You Honorable. understand. So uh, it, it was, it was, I want that one to be clear. That okay. I, it was a question that, uh, what, what is your view about what the chiefs are saying about the presence of the military? All and right. I said that we are where we are because of the intransigence of some of our youth. And, and, and uh, if, if we, we, we show good character, okay. why not? Point well made. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Eric Tete is the uh, MC at Yulokrobo Municipal Assembly. We're trying to connect with our Eastern Regional Correspondent Kofi Ajay to also tell us what is happening in the area. You're still watching the program on Metro Television. We're live on DSTV Channel 277. We're also live on Facebook at Metro TV Ghana and on Twitter at Metro TV GH. You can share your thoughts on the issues and stories we've discussed so far on the show. As I indicated earlier, we're trying to get in touch with our Eastern Regional Correspondent, Kofi Ajay, to tell us really what is happening on the ground because we just had the MC of the area uh, inform us about the decision that they are likely to take if they can have some assurances from the chiefs in the area. I understand our correspondent, Kofi Ajay, is on the phone right now. Kofi, good afternoon. Welcome to the show. Yeah, afternoon. What have you gathered so far? Um, as it stands now, um, the ECG operations will start today and they will still be at home. And they will be at home for some time. We are anticipating that uh, maybe from Wednesday going, they will get to the danger zone, which is around the Agomenia and the Odumasi area. Um, what is going on right now, when you talk to some of the youth in the community, they are insisting that they haven't sat down yet with the ECG. And if the ECG did not come and sit down with them to discuss one or two things, they are not ready to accept the prepaid meters in their homes. In fact, when you go on the grounds, for me, I've been in the area for some time now. When this incident happens in 2019 May, I was on the ground. A lot happened, gunshots and stoning everywhere in town continuously for three days. This time, the youth are saying they are prepared because the other time, somewhere 2019, they were not prepared and due to that, the policemen take over them. But this time, they are prepared. Right. Um, when we spoke when to the MC just right now, he said that they will withdraw the military on condition that the traditional authorities in the area can guarantee the safety of the ECG officials. Have you heard anything like that? Um, for the traditional leaders, there is some kind of division as it stands now. The last time we, I spoke with the DOM divisional chief, this is Nene Mwale, he is like he has no idea of anything. It's like the ECG it's not ready to see them. They're always uh, contacting the corner instead of coming to them to talk to their people. And because of these divisions, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if some of the chiefs will be ready to protect the ECG people. Okay. But, so if I but understand you clearly, uh, Kofi, if I understand you clearly, what you're trying to say is that they are divided. Does that mean that some are in support of the military presence in the area and some are yes. not in support of it regarding yes, to the chiefs? Some of the chiefs are in support 
of the uh, installation of the prepaid, but some of the chiefs are not in support. As I said, the the, the divisional chief of DOM, Nana Nenemwale, I'm not sure he's in support of you. He said it clearly that the ECG is not ready to talk to them. And he is against the fact that the last time when the incident happened, the BNI people invited the youth foundation in their community and threatened them in their offices. Though, and so they have not yet come to them to discuss anything with them. So they are not going to support this. I'm not sure they are going to support it. Not at all. All right, Kofi, thank you very much for speaking to us this afternoon. He's our correspondent in the Eastern region. Business News is next. And in business today, a member of the Bank of Ghana's Monetary Policy Committee, Dr. Bradu Otu, says the data from the first week of June are pointing to a marginal decrease in the pace of inflation. This comes after May witnessed a 27.6% inflation, the highest in 18 years. Early indications have signaled an easing in the rate at which prices of goods and services are rising. Inflation accelerated to 27.6% in May, an 18-year high compared to 7.5% at the end of May 2021. This has been driven primarily by the pump price of petroleum products and its effect on the cost of transportation and food, among other items. The bank's latest forecast shows a continuing elevated inflation profile in the near term with a prolonged horizon for inflation to return to the target band. Inflation expectations by consumers, businesses and the banking sector have also heightened. According to the central bank, risks to the inflation outlook are on the upside and emanate from the availability of inputs for food production, imported inflation, continued upward adjustments in, in ex-pump petroleum prices and transportation costs, possible increases in utility tariffs, and potential wage pressures. The second round effects of these price adjustments are expected to further amplify inflation pressures in the outlook. Efficacy of the central bank's primary monetary policy tool, which is its inflation targeting framework, has come under scrutiny in recent months as inflation continues on the ascendancy. Now, with only a few days to the deadline for recapitalization within the insurance industry, foreign-owned companies are now evidently poised to dominate the market. The deadline, originally set for 30th June 2021, was first extended to January 2022 and for an additional six months to June 2022 due to the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. It is the biggest ever recapitalization of industry operators to date. A 233% increase in the requisite minimum capital for insurance and writers to 50 million Ghana cities from 15 million Ghana cities. A reason some ascribe for foreign companies expanding their footprints due to the inability of local firms to meet the requirement. However, in actual fact, foreign investors started flooding Ghana's insurance industry even before the latest recapitalization levels were announced. Indeed, the effects of recapitalization on the industry's ownership structure have been smaller than many industry analysts predicted. Two local firms have taken on foreign investors to meet the new minimum capital requirement. But the primary reason behind the surge in foreign participation is the large yet grossly underexploited potentials of Ghana's insurance market. Insurance penetration has been abysmally low, estimated at just 2% as of 2019. The economy had been growing faster than most other economies across Africa from 2017 until this year, when it was suddenly affected by intense instability. The state's policy has focused on formalization of the economy since 2017, which can be expected to support the taking of insurance policies. Increased foreign participation is expected to strengthen the industry, especially the life segment, which is a retail activity. John Corte is standing by with the latest in sports after the break.
It's 44 past midday here in the Ghanaian capital of Accra. My name is Fayo John Quarte, and it's time for sports. Let's start at the Accra Sports Stadium, where Premier Club has to folk were embarrassed at the Accra Sports Stadium on the last day of the Ghana Premier League when they stopped four goals to one to RTU. Samuel Bildu was left disappointed after the match. It was not really, really bad. Even, I don't know what to say, but it's a game. It's quite unfortunate. So, I think that. Uh, we made a lot of mistakes during this match and then we have a lot of work to do. Uh, I think uh, the, the players, instead of them to stick into their various position, you could see that some of them are running around without position themselves well. I think that costs us a lot. But this is the work of a technical team. We have to work extra. I believe in my boys and I know what they can do. Was still on the Ghana Premier League, newly crowned champions of the EPL, not EPL, Ghana Premier League at Santi Kotoko, wrap up their league campaign with one one draw against Accra Lions at the Accra Sports Stadium on Saturday. Prosper Ogon is the head coach of Kotoko. I think it's a fair result. I think we had our chances, especially in the first half. Uh, we were very dominant in the first half, created some few, do no full chances, but half chances that we could have taken advantage of. I mean, the second half, I think, they came in especially when they got their goal. So when they got their goal, they, they sat back and decided to knock uh, the ball around. Somewhere around that time, I think we lost our shape, so we gave them those spaces to, to operate. But then uh, we did a few substitutions, but we needed to score. So we were down, <laughs> and uh, we had to do some changes. So we sacrificed Nete for Evans. And we asked Boateng to go and adapt to Mbella. And I think when we did those changes, um, we, we, we got some spaces to play. That's your sports. My name is Fail John Kwati. Hetty standing by for the latest in showbiz. Thank you, Johnny, for that update. It's time for entertainment news. Now, following the highly successful release of the African remix of his hit single, Sugar Cane, Camilo is set to release a Spanish remix according to reliable information. The Spanish remix is done and ready for release in a few days with very impressive numbers across various digital platforms. The African remix, which features Nigerian stars Mayukun, Dako and fellow countryman Ken Promise, has since its release debuted on several music charts across Africa. It remains one of the few Ghanaian songs on the Billboard US Afrobeat charts, currently sitting at number 22 as of June 18. 2022. Now, the lady who was assaulted alongside her husband and his friend by Nigerian Afrobeat musician Bena Boys Associates has finally spoken out of silence. The lady, simply identified as Briella Nemi, took to her Instagram stories on Monday, June 20, 2022, where she gave a breakdown of what transpired at the nightclub on that fateful evening. According to Briella, they were visiting Nigeria from the United States of America and the United Kingdom for their friend's wedding. They visited Kubana nightclub to celebrate the couple in the company of about 20 friends when the ugly incident occurred. Briella narrated how she was accosted three times by Bena Boy's men requesting her to meet him. On the first attempt, I told them I wasn't interested in talking to Bena Boy and I'm married to my partner. He came again the second time and was met with the same response. He came the third time and that caused a few of our friends to flare up as they asked why he kept coming to disturb me. She recounted. She said this led to a fight between her friends and Bena Boy's team. However, it was briefly resolved by the security personnel at the club. Things took a different in turn when Bena Boy's friends started a fight again and they started shooting. She alleged that Bena Boy gave the green light to his security to start shooting at them in the club while he laughed about it. Briella, while recounting what happened, said within a split second there was chaos in the club. Her partner and friend were shot in the head and leg respectively. The young lady said it took the owner of the nightclub, Obi Kubana, four days to reach out to them after the shooting. Briella said she had been traumatized since the ugly incident. The news of Bena Boy and his associates almost 
killing fun seekers at the club broke some weeks ago. Several eyewitnesses gave accounts of how the singer and his crew acted in an uncivilized manner, causing harm to both people and properties at the club. That's it for entertainment news on Newsbeat. My name is Harriet Adi. Kenneth. Thank you very much, Harriet. International news is next. We take you to France because less than two months after he was re-elected president, Emmanuel Macron has lost control of the French National Assembly following a strong performance by a left alliance and the far right. He had called on voters to deliver a solid majority. French elections, Macron loses majority, as French says, in bringing together mainstream parties from the left with communists and greens into an... French elections, Macron loses majority, as French says in bringing together mainstream parties from the left with communists and greens into an... French elections, Macron loses majority, as French says in bringing together mainstream parties from the left with communists and greens into an... French elections, Macron loses majority, as French says in bringing together mainstream parties from the left with communists and... That's it for now, but before we go, look again at our top stories. Aggrieved prospective pilgrims protest and call for the removal of Hajj board chair Sheikh Aisi Kwe over allegations of embezzlement and incompetency as this year's pilgrimage to Mecca begins today. Minister of Roads and Highways inspects progress of repair works on roads and bridges destroyed by floods in the central region. The Jukwatrifu Prasu Road works expected to complete today and open for public use. An unidentified young lady believed to be a teenager has been found dead in a pool of blood at Inkremufrokrum in the Abra Asei Bukwaman Kese district of the central region. And before we go, we've been told that the Prasso Road has been opened for public use. My name is Kenneth Jesse. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.